Hello everybody and welcome back to another edition of the Rural Report. I am your Rural 2IC and it is another day which means that we are doing another video for the 30 days of survival aka September which is National Preparedness Month. Now this was uh, done because I wanted to do this in a fun and creative way. Uh, my little five-year-old little rural gave me the idea of doing it in the ABCs. And that seemed like a really great idea and it's worked out pretty well so far up until now. So let's just keep the ball rolling. If this is your first time watching, hello, welcome. Thank you for stopping on in. Uh, if this is uh, your first video of watching and uh, you seem to like this and hit the bell down there for notifications so you don't miss any more like it and I'll have a little card somewhere up here at the end that you can click and watch the series uh, all the way up until now and then you won't miss the rest of them. For the rest of you, buckle up because today we're on R. Uh, so let's just jump right into this one. The first one is going to be radio. How's your communications? Do you have a radio? Do you have a way to reach out and touch somebody? If something goes sideways, how are you going to communicate? Communication is key. It's one of the things that you're going to need for intelligence. It's going to be a way that you're going to be able to plan and coordinate uh, logistics. I mean, if, if you're going to try and get it to where uh, you can tell somebody, hey, I need something or don't come this way or hey, I need help. How are you going to do that long distance without some sort of radio? And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be able to uh, transmit. Maybe it's just a radio to listen. Now, transmitting would be the better way to go, right? Uh, and there's multiple different ways, whether you're going to do a ham radio, a shortwave, a CB radio, uh, some sort of maybe walkie-talkie, satellite phone, whatever. They all have their pluses and minuses and everything like that. But even if you don't understand, you're just, you're, you're technology challenged, and I get it. Uh, technology can be frustrating at times. Uh, you can get some sort of just like a NOAA radio, something to where uh, you, you have the ability to at least pick up some channels, and you can get some sort of information. Uh, so... Something is going to be better than nothing in, in this sense. And uh, I, I would highly, highly, highly recommend to be able to have a radio to where you can communicate, you can send and receive. But, uh, you know, if, if all you're going to do is receive, that's better than nothing at all, at least in my opinion. Uh, but that's going to uh, transition us over and I'm going to go to my next one which is going to be reaction. Now, uh, in order for you to sometimes react appropriately, uh, you, you're going to need that radio so you can have some sort of intelligence. Somebody's going to be able to give you forewarning. They're going to be able to tell you, hey, uh, danger is coming, or um, you know, we, we've been overrun and then we're headed your way. It, it gives you that thing so uh, you have the ability to react as information is coming in. Sometimes, though, say you don't have a radio and uh, something just springs up and it, it surprises you. You know, we all get surprised and it's going to be one of the things that's going to be very, very difficult to train for. The more you train for something, the more your body gets used to it. And so you start getting it built in. You start getting it to where it's just a fluid motion that when something happens, your body just naturally, uh, you know, goes to its training mode. Now, uh, your lack of training or no training at all is going to go to basic instinct. Uh, and, you know, it's one of them things kids do it to each other where uh, you fake in there real quick and you do one of them numbers. That's the body's reaction of self-defense. You're, you're trying to do something to where you're, you know, uh, trying to protect yourself. You're going into a mode where, you know, something's happening and your body, you know, your mind doesn't have enough time to process it. And so your body just flashes into some sort of a protection mode. Uh, and you can train yourself to uh, react differently. It just takes time and patience and, and just uh, a lot of repetition going over and over and over. There's more R's. We just keep flowing R's today. Um, and and uh, when it comes into this, 
reactionary sometimes is going to be the case. Uh, you know, you, you can't plan for everything. When you get into preparedness, you try and uh, take it to where you are on the pre side of it. You don't want to be reactionary all the time. You would like to be on the front side of everything. So as it's come, you, you're already in motion. You're already, you know, you've got the, the hatches battened down. You, you've got things boarded up. You've got, you know, all your stuff already set. It's the people that don't prepare that all of a sudden uh, water starts seeping in from everywhere. Now they have to react. No, what do I do? They freak out. They have to try and process all this information and then what it's going to take to uh, rectify the situation, right? Um, but we just talked about there because water seeping in everywhere, that brings us to rain. So my third word being rain. Uh, rain is usually a good thing, right? It, it uh, gives us not only water to drink, uh, but it's also something that's uh, a basic necessity for life. And uh, something other than humans is plants. You know, your, your um, vegetable garden needs water. Uh, your livestock needs water. And us as humans, we need water. And uh, nature provides. And so make sure that you take rain into consideration. How are you going to collect rain? How are you going to harness a free drink of water that you really don't have to put effort in. You just have to uh, get something going and then, you know, periodically maintain it. Uh, you know, things break and things like that all the time. But, uh, you know, for the most part, you set it up and just let it do its thing. And uh, you can collect the rainwater. Now, when it comes to it, rain also has its downfall. You can get too much rain. Uh, then you have to be able to prepare for that. And... Sometimes rain comes at the inopportune time. Sometimes it makes it to where uh, you're just getting a really heavy shower day after day after day. It makes things soupy and muddy. It makes going outside, you know, miserable. Uh, you know, sometimes when it's a chilly day and it's raining, then it's just that much more miserable, right? But uh, the animals don't care. The animals want food. They, they you know, things need to still get done and be taken care of. So, when it comes to weather, it's a difficult thing to plan for, especially after SHTF. If you can't just flip on the news and watch the, the weather person on TV to let you know, hey, there's a chance of rain or it's going to be sunny for the next three days. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be quite difficult to be able to, to, to know. Uh, do I need to venture down to the creek because it hasn't rained for a couple of days and get extra water? Or is it a waste of time because it might rain in the morning, you know? So you have to have that preparedness mindset. Uh, when it comes to rain, harness as much as you possibly can of it. Uh, it's going to be one of those things that if you can, uh, it would be better for you to build some sort of structure and have so many different containers that uh, I would rather have the problem of what to do with all this water in containers, not, you know, uh, uh, a huge lake in my front yard that's not supposed to be there. Uh, I'd rather have that problem than uh, only having one container and not knowing if I can keep it full. Um, but you need, you may need help doing all that. And that brings me into my fourth word, which is recruitment. Uh, recruiting is going to be one of the uh, kind of important things, right? You're not going to want to deal with SHTF on your own. And that doesn't matter what it is. Okay. If it's a personal SHTF, you, sh you shouldn't be facing difficult times on your own. Uh, it's always nice to have friends, family, somebody you trust and, and love and care about to kind of lean on, help, help get you through that. And depending on how bad of an SHTF, uh, sometimes more is better. Um, I think it's possible to have too many people, right? Uh, the more people, the more resources and things that you need. But uh, to have a decent amount of people, you're going to need to recruit for that, right? Usually you don't just have uh, uh, 20 people knock at your door in the morning and go, hey, uh, he's a physician, I'm a blacksmith, and they're a veterinarian and a farmer. And it, too good to be true probably is, right? So you're going to need to recruit. Um, and then on the flip side, Maybe you need to be recruited. Maybe uh, 
uh, instead of you forming your own group, maybe you need to join an already formed group. And that goes on vetting. Um, both sides need to vet each other. You need to make sure that it's a good fit for everybody. Just because uh, you find somebody, you recruit them, they look good, you vet them, you think they're good, you bring them in front of the group and the group all looks at them and uh, sees all the skills and the qualifications and everything like that. And the group all votes and it's, it's unanimous. Hey, let's bring this guy in. He's, he's really good. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for that guy or girl or whoever, right? Uh, it's gotta be, it's gotta be mutual agreement on all parties. So make sure that you understand that whether you're recruiting or you are the recruit T, I guess, recruiter, recruitee, whatever that, um, Everybody needs to agree. Everybody needs to vet each other. It needs to be a good fit. So, uh, but that's my four. And we're going to do an honorable mention, which is going to be recycling. Uh, they have the fancy little thing, reuse and uh, reduce and recycle. It's probably pretty fitting for SHTF. We need to ration, which is reduce. Uh, we need to reuse whatever we can. And uh, we do that by recycling things. When you open up a can of beans, eat the beans, uh, take the paper off. The, the label and the wrapper part on the outside that tells you the brand name and the ingredients, pull that off. Now you got some tender. Pull it off. Now you got something to write on. Take some notes and something. Uh, pull it off. Turn it around. Now you have a, a different label for when you're canning or something like that. Uh, you know, reuse it, figure out another thing that you can do. Try not to make trash as much as possible during SHTF. Take that can and uh, use it to boil water, use it to, uh, you know, eat out of for something else. There's a bunch of different things that you can do with anything that you would think is trash. What can you actually do with it? Think about that as you kind of go through, um, you know, your, let's say the next couple of days. Before you throw something away, pause for just a moment and look at it and go, if this was a SHTF, would I really be throwing this away or what could I be doing with it? Could I put this in the compost pile? Could I be uh, putting it up and doing something? That, that tin can, I already have a ton of them that I made into a cup and I've already done a bunch of this. What could I do? I don't know. Maybe we can put some rocks into it, dangle it in a string and, and have some sort of like early warning detection system. Uh, there's all sorts of things. It, it's kind of limitless on how creative you are. So uh, it's one of them little fun things that you can do if you if you have some time. It, trust me, it'll it'll be one of those little things that will get your mind working. That's always a good thing. So, uh, But that is what I've got for you guys today. I hope you guys had uh, a little bit of enjoyment out of this. You got something going on, right? Because, you know, that's kind of the whole purpose of this whole thing. So with today's letter being R, it is the challenge that we're still going to do, which is I don't want to make the list for you. I want you to help me make the list. Think of one or two words that is prepping related and drop them down in the comment section below. Let's make our own list as a prepping community and see what we can come up with. You guys have been putting out some amazing uh, replies in the past couple of videos. So I'm curious to see what you can come up with R. So uh, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys have a blessed day. Stay tuned because there's more information to come. And with that, please remember, remain united because we're all prepping in this together.